Boxing Workouts with Bill Welsh as your commentator and Jules, Mr. Wrestling Strongbow officiating. This program is under the personal supervision of Mr. George S. Johnston, producer. This program is official. The signal to clear the ring has been given and wrestling workouts will begin in just 60 seconds. This is Bill Welch at ringside, ready to report the action for you. Right now, we're going to meet some of the rugged boys here in the ring. Kubla Khan, the 280-pound Mongolian, is wrestling with Lord Blears, the British Empire heavyweight wrestling champion, and serving as sort of an unofficial referee at the moment, the Great Bolo, complete with his mask as always. So let's see what they do as these great names of wrestling, along with the near greats that you're going to meet, and some of the promising youngsters in this great sport, polish up their offense and defense for future matches. Lord Blears, of course, is noted for his speed, and you saw him use it there a moment ago to get away. But here's an arm tug takedown by Kubla Khan, and with a 280-pounder leaning over you, it's pretty tough to break it. Matter of fact, the great Bolo comes in and breaks the hole for the moment, and Lord Blears shows you how he steps away from those once in a while when it does become necessary. Now he wants to explain something to the great Bolo and to Kubla Khan, some particular maneuver that he wants them to try out on him, so he can attempt to break it in turn. And here it is, a body lock with a head pressure there in the diaphragm that makes it tough to breathe, and watch Lord Blear show some of his speed and some of his agility as he goes to a wrist lock, forces a somersault, and sends Kubla Khan into the ropes. They're up again, ready to go, because of course these are the workouts, and this time Kubla Khan goes by and puts a real solid full Nelson on Lord Blear's. This is going to hurt a little bit here, and Lord Blears gets busy with those agile feet of his, and he is very agile with him, by the way, for a big man particularly, trying to get Kubla Khan off balance to see if he can force him to break the full Nelson. And it's beginning to hurt a little bit more, and Lord Blears isn't about to get out of the hole, so the great Bolo orders it broken. Well, they're working out, but it's always exciting to see the workouts, just as it's exciting to see them in their matches. And now Lord Blears wants to try a leg snatch, and he works it very nicely. Takes down that 280-pounder with a resounding crash, and then they break on the command of the great Bolo. Kubla Khan walks a little bit like all Asiatic wrestlers, those that you see in sumo wrestling and other types of Asiatic wrestling, lifting the feet high as he steps along. And now as they're on the ropes, the break is ordered, and they'll go back to the center of the ring and try some other hold here. Watch him step into it. It's going to be a wrist lock. And a try by Kubla Khan for the somersault. He makes it work with all that weight of his. Gets a head scissors, can't keep it. And Lord Blear, showing his speed, moves up and is in a reverse pin position. But with 280 pounds working against you, you can't always stay on top. And here they are rolling back and forth across that ring. And who's going to finally end up the top man? Well, it's Kubla Khan. So the great bolo says, enough of rolling back and forth. Let's get on with the wrestling. They break, and we're up again. Look out. Lord Blears, I think, was a little too anxious to get started there. He's really having himself a time today, trying to use some of his fine wrestling tactics against such a big man. Kubla Khan doesn't have the skill of Lord Blears or the speed, as you can see here, as Lord Blears takes a quarter Nelson from behind. But Kubla Khan's strength is a little too much for him, and he snaps him with a mare, even though he was on his knees, puts him over on his back. Look at Lord Blears bridge beautifully to come up out of that hole, get those shoulders up off the canvas, and then get taken back down again, and then counter with a head scissors. Remember, there is a counter move to every wrestling hold, and you give a good wrestler time, and he'll figure out a way to do it. Locking up in body locks is on the ropes. We can't do too much here. And it looks like the great Bolo wants to come in and see what he can do now. So he talks to Lord Blairs and says he'll take over in place of Kubla Khan. A friendly handshake for those two. There's the bell, and we're underway with more wrestling action for you. The great Bolo out of Texas wearing his famous mask, and Lord Blairs and he entered. And look at Bolo's speed now as he got a nice figure four head scissors there on the takedown that time. And a word of caution to Lord Blairs, he's trying to explain something to him. Now, when they wrestle each other, believe me, they won't be giving any household hints on how to do a better job of wrestling. But when they're in the workouts, once in a while you get a chance to see them explain something to an opponent. And that's what uh, Bolo was explaining there, how to take down quickly with the wrist lock and force the somersault, which he did. Now, Lord Blairs is going to try it. Here he is, takes it, gives a little kick, and over goes the great Bolo into the ropes. So that's how it's done. Let's see if they want to try it anymore. Now something else, perhaps. As Bolo moves out, always wears this mask, wants to hide his features. Not, I think, because he's not very handsome, but maybe because he just doesn't want people to know who he really is. Just wrestling under the name of the great Bolo. Still trying that wrist lock takedown and trying it very successfully. They move in once again. 
And this time, something else coming up as they go to the ropes. However, they're off balance before they can get any maneuver underway. And that's it for the moment. Wait, wait a minute. The great Bolo gets a little excited here. Why he threw that punch, I don't know. They seem to be perfectly friendly a moment ago. And even Kubla Khan is having trouble getting the great Bolo. Look out, a counter punch in turn. A rabid punch by Lord Blears. As if to tell the great Bolo that if he wants to punch, he can do it too. And Blears is mad, and who wouldn't be? Because things were going very calmly and very quietly. And all of a sudden, the great Bolo comes up with a punch in the midsection that didn't feel very good at all. So back to the center of the ring, and they're indicating that at least they want to be friends. Let's see how long this lasts, though, this friendship here. Tied up on the ropes, and uh, they are uh, off balance. And oh, wait a minute, look out. Blears made a motion, and uh, the great Bolo did come charging in with a tackle there, pulling hair, taking Blears into the ropes. And this Bolo, who can lose his temper in the fraction of a second, well, he's done it once again. Now, I think uh, Blears would like to have it be a friendly workout. That wasn't much of a handshake, but apparently it'll have to do for all we're going to get to see. Yeah. Well, they start moving in. Lock up each other in the wrestling hold of the referee hold, as it's sometimes called. And Blairs is back to working that wrist lock and that somersault takedown and working it nicely once again. And it looks like Bolo at least has calmed down. Blairs keeps the wrist lock key locked there, as you can see, with the left arm. Takes it to a top wrist lock. And Bolo went bouncing his way to the ropes to get out of that one because it was beginning to bother him just a little bit. In the referee's hold again, and here is Bolo with the hold this time. He's got a wrist lock, which he's turned into a partial arm bar. Now he takes it around as the bell sounds into a top wrist lock. And a takedown. The bell has sounded. Hey, fellas, it's all over, and Kubla Khan is going to have to take them apart, apparently, here. Still having some trouble with him. Not very happy with each other. Well, we have more excitement coming up here because thanks to the All-American Sports Network, we have newsreel clips now, which will show you some real wrestling action. These are made of a recent match featuring Bolo and his partner, Tom Rice, and the former three times world's champion, Chandra Zappa. Well, Rice has just gone out of the ring here on a tag, and Bolo comes in. This is a tag team match, and look at that Bolo with that top headlock working over Zabo. Rice has come in on a tag from his partner, the great Bolo, and the two referees, Mike Ruby in the foreground, Hank Matheny there walking in the background, having a little bit of trouble handling this situation. Rice tags, and the great Bolo comes back. A familiar tactic, you've seen this tag team match of the great Bolo and Tom Rice, because they like to change back and forth, and at the moment, Chandra Zabo won't let go of Rice, and the referees have ruled that last tag was not legal. That Bolo did not reach over the top rope. There he does. And despite the fact that uh, Zabo has a tremendous hold, of course, it does not count. That rabbit punch has got Zabo in bad shape. Here comes the fork shooter, chop the throat, and another one, and Zabo is getting a rotary. On top is the great Bolo, and it looks like he's won himself a fall right here and now. We'll see more of Bolo in a moment. And Bolo, seeing Lord Layton begin to move in on him, doesn't want to get himself in a corner, but here he is in another one. Let's see if he'll stay there. Whoa, he walked into a fourth judo chop on that throat. Here's a top headlock put on by Lord Layton. And uh, there's the break. Very calmly so. And look at Bolo cover up, and he thought one of those big hands was going to come chopping away at that throat of his. I don't wonder. Well, this time it is the great Bolo. Got the leg snatch. And the judo chop. There it is. And that'll spoil most any plan of any wrestler. When you get one on the throat just like that. Bolo is complaining to the ringsiders and to Nicky Bockwinkle about just what happened there. But I think perhaps he asked for it a little bit. Now, once again, he has Lord Layton on the ropes, and he's trying a punch of his own, and that was a fist right on the jaw. Look at that big hand of Lord Layton upheld there and ready to come down on Bolo, and for some reason, he restrained himself. And I think Nicky Bockwinkle may have decided it's time for him to get in here and wrestle with Lord Layton. Things are getting too hot. You can't say under the collar, of course, when you're talking about wrestlers, but they certainly were getting hot-tempered out there. And here's Bockwinkle showing the speed that a youngster always has, but not always the skill. Here are go-behinds, one after another. Look at them. Who's going to end up here with control? Nobody. Trying a series of go-behinds, and nothing seemed to work there. Each one a little too fast for the other on that particular maneuver. Side headlock put on here by Nicky Bockwinkle. He's got a tremendous man, though, that he's got to hold on there. And Bockwinkle, who has been in professional wrestling only about a year, may get a lesson here at any moment from a man like Lord Layton. Here he goes to the ropes. Back he comes and uh, sidetracks himself, and very smartly so. It's like running into a mountain to come charging into Lord Layton. Side headlock again by Nicky Bockwinkle. And this time, maybe he's got a little better balance. No, here he goes to the ropes once more and flies in for a body scissors. What happened? Nothing. He couldn't take him down. Ordinarily, another wrestler will go down with a crash when a man comes in with a flying body scissors such as that. And there's the bell to stop the action here for just a moment between Bockwinkle and Lord Layton. 
once again, here are authentic and actual newsreel clips, thanks to the All-American Sports Network of more of your favorite wrestlers. You're going to see Lord Layton in action this time in an exciting match filmed right at the Hollywood Legion Stadium. And he's meeting the redoubtable sockeye Jack McDonald. That's McDonald in the wrestling tights there, which many of the older wrestlers seem to favor. Ooh, McDonald dropped a punch in there. The man from the Pacific Northwest, pretty tough boy, driving that fist in there. And referee Hank Lafini better get a stop on this, or Lord Layton's going to be in real trouble. Top headlock now by sockeye Jack McDonald. Layton back into the ropes to get out of it, just lifts him up and deposits him out practically among the cash customers out there. Sockeye Jack doesn't care for that a bit. He got that nickname, by the way, by winning a salmon fishing tournament up at Seattle, Washington. Hank Lafini had the count going, and Sockeye had to get back in the ring or forfeit the fall in this match. Here's Lord Layton pushing to the ropes. Watch the break. Something may hurt is one right in the midsection and the counter punch. Ooh, a little too much for Sockeye. Shook him up right down to his shoelaces. In the center of the ring, holding hair. Sockeye Jack McDonald driving that fist into the face. And Hank the thing to the referee busy there. The solution the whole problem. That judo chop at the throat. Here comes another one. Look at that. And down goes Sockeye. On top is Lord Layton. He's heading in for two and three and the four. You'll see more workouts in just another moment. As the workouts resume now at the Hollywood Legion Stadium, Lord Layton is in here talking to Don Arnold. But it's going to be old rough, tough Tom Rice. It's going to go against him. So uh, Don Arnold will serve as sort of referee for the moment as Lord Layton and Tom Rice get underway with the action. Just a little practice leg trip there by Lord Layton, and Tom Rice is mad. Yes, sir. He thinks that's no way to be treated when you're in the wrestling ring. And Don Arnold, as a matter of fact, says, when you come off the ropes, now just take it easy. And here's Rice demonstrating that when we break on the ropes, let's break. And uh, Lord Layton seems to be reminding Tom Rice there have been a good many times in Tom Rice's career when those breaks off the rope weren't so clean on his part either. They're into the referee's hole, chin-locking each other now. And Lord Layton, with the superior height, had the advantage, lost it. And Tom Rice has a top headlock working for himself here. Here's the left by Lord Layton. Once again, another opponent finds himself outside the ropes and a judo chop added on by Lord Layton, which he probably shouldn't have done. And Tom Rice it comes back a very unhappy man. He was a great college football player at the University of San Francisco. And he seems to be quite a lecturer as far as the wrestling ring is concerned right now. And once again, Don Arnold tries to serve as peacemaker, and here's the offer of a handshake, and uh, they do shake hands. So perhaps they'll get down to wrestling here, at least for the moment. On the ropes, look out, right back to the hostilities all over again with a heel of the hand blow to the midsection there by Tom Rice. Into the referee's hold once more. Lord Layton maneuvering Rice to the corner, and they think he was getting set to pick him up once more, but instead they break, and Rice makes a big, big thing out of this clean break here. Layton sneaks in nicely for a leg snatch to take down a step over toe hold. This is one that hurts, particularly when you have a 275 pounder on there. And Don Arnold is afraid it might lead to something. He's ordered the break, but Tom Rice, now that he has a chance to get the advantage, tries to come up with his own toe hold. But I think he's going to listen to the wise counsel of Don Arnold and break the hold, which he does. Rice started to walk away, which is a bad thing to do when you got a big man like Lord Layton stalking you around the wrestling ring. In he moves and beautifully done. Now, you know, most wrestlers would go for the leg with a leg dive using the arms. Instead, he does it with a leg scissors. But here's Lord Layton with a great big heavy leg over Tom Rice's throat, and it's practically an impasse. Lord Layton all set to chop one at the tummy. Changes his mind. Tom Rice saw it coming, trying to get even with a toe hold here. And Don Arnold says, come on, let's break it up once again, fellas. So they're going to. Wait a minute. Toe holds all over the place, and then we got a mad man in there once again. That boy Tom Rice had those fists ready to fly, despite the fact he's up against a 275 pounder. Body locks him now. Tom Rice with a hold here on Lord Layton, and moving up, trying to get up under the chin, which gives added leverage as far as this hold is concerned. Keeps the other boy off balance. But you notice Lord Layton very smartly turned in the hole there just as Rice relaxed and he got himself out of trouble. Matter of fact, here's his counter hold. A nice key lock, top wrist lock. Did you notice how quickly Lord Layton, who's not noted for speed, put it on? There's Rice with that maneuver once again where he puts on the leg scissors. Driving in there to, on a what is actually a leg dive, but he turns it into a leg scissors. A maneuver that you very seldom see any wrestler use. Here's the break, and here we are at the center of the ring once again, and Don Arnold says, I think it's about time I took over and got a little work out here. Let's see which one of these opponents he's going to pick. It looks like it's going to be Tom Rice that he wants to work with. 
No, Lord Layton decides he'll stay in the ring and he'll work out against Don Arnold. And uh, at least they're off to a happy start. Tom Rice, now that he's the unofficial referee in here, gives quite a lecture to the boys. Of course, he's pretty good at talking with his wrestling, whatever he's doing. Into the referee's hold and on the ropes and off balance. And Tom Rice orders the break, which they do. And a little conversation developed there between Rice and Lord Layton about that. Started moving and Layton beautifully faking that time. Got himself a wrist lock and with his longer reach is pretty tough for Don Arnold to use anything except that knee which he did nicely there to break the hold. Now watch once again. You know Don Arnold was a weightlifting champion. And he's of course got plenty of weight to lift here at a 275 pounder but he's got a nice body lock going and he does lift him. Look at that. Picks that man right up off the canvas. Here's the break in the corner. Wait a minute. Now Lord Layton's unhappy about something. Chopped away at the throat and Tom Rice. And this is a strange role for him trying to keep things quiet in the ring here at the moment. In moves Lord Layton. He's faking beautifully if you notice and getting that wrist lock. Now top wrist lock. A leg trip for takedown into the short arm scissors. Faster than we can tell you about it. And here's Don Arnold somersaulting backwards beautifully to come up out of the hole and get himself out of trouble. Now there was a very excellent wrestling maneuver by both the boys. Lord Layton with a series of maneuvers, putting on a series of holes. Don Arnold getting out. He's trying for the abdominal stretch. He's got to lift that right arm up behind his head to get the full pressure on. This is a hole from which practically no man can get out. But Lord Layton is walking away and apparently getting out of the hold as Tom Rice looks at it and seems to be surprised anybody can get away from it. A nice drop behind. And Lord Layton comes up with a double toe hold and hibbity hop. Here goes Don Arnold hopping his way out of trouble like a bunny rabbit. In the center of the ring and into that referee's hold again. And this time it's Don Arnold with the wrist lock. And watch now as he bars on the arm, pulls up on the wrist. This puts pressure at the shoulder and the elbow. And the break is ordered by Tom Rice. He had the hold and he had it pretty well demonstrated there, says Tom Rice. So he'll break this time. They move back once again. And Leighton trying for a go behind. Arnold trying for a go behind. Nobody can get behind. And around and around in circles we go. And then they break. Ready once again. Who's going to get the hold? There's Layton faking as he's been doing so well in this particular workout. He has his step over toe hold. He's reversed it. And Don Arnold has tried to push this 275 pounder off. That's pretty tough to do. And it looks like there's the bell. So it's all over here for the moment and a friendly handshake between the, between the two boys after some rather exciting action out there in the ring. Arnold walks across. Layton is leaving. We'll have more excitement for you coming up. Now again, thanks to our All-American Sports Network, here are more newsreels of actual wrestling matches. And in this one, you're going to see some of the boys you've just watched in the wrestling workout. So stand by, because here comes the excitement for you once again. Let's see who it's going to be. Well, it's Tom Rice in there. And it is going to be a match between he and Sandra Zabo. And we have the famous Pappy Boynton, the World War II flying ace in the Marine Corps, serving as the referee for this particular match. Here's a nice short arm scissors put on by Tom Rice. He's got a very punishing hold in there. And it looks like Zabo is going to have trouble getting out of that one. Trying to work his way out of it. This is a hold, of course, that puts pressure on that arm. And as a matter of fact, if you can keep it long enough, you can render an opponent's arm so numb he can't use it for a matter of several minutes. But as you notice, Zabo came up, holding onto the leg, and tried to pin Rice. It hasn't worked. And uh, Zabo is uh, beginning to worry about that hand. You can notice it's turning a little bit white because the circulation is cut off for this particular hold. Gets Rice off balance. Now watch his counter move as he slaps at that hand to try to restore the circulation. We'll see more of Rice in another moment. With our workouts ready to resume, Tom Rice is in the ring here. And we have Leah Leilani in there as the referee. Rice is going to meet a boy he hasn't gotten along with before named Joe Blanchard, who's out here in Hollywood from the Midwest. A newcomer out here, but a very promising wrestler, but a hot-tempered one at the same time. And he <laughs> leg snatches, and Rice runs down with a thud. And a step over toe hold, and Blanchard breaks at the suggestion of Leah Leilani, who, of course, is the famous Hawaiian wrestler, former professional football player. Rice wants to know how come I got lifted so high and dropped so hard on that canvas. Into that referee's hold once again, and Rice takes the top headlock, grabs an arm also, and he's lifting up on it, and this puts a lot of pressure, and this is one that hurts. And Leo Leilani decides it's enough, as there is a takedown there. And the break is ordered. Leilani notices in his bare feet, he always wrestles that way. And I hope we'll have a chance to see him in action, too. Nice dive and a leg trip and a roll up leg scissors by Joe Blanchard. Worked it very rapidly. Look out. Tom Rice comes over on top side. 
This really shouldn't have happened. Leilani had ordered the break. They were a little slow about getting up, and so Blanchard is going to lift Tom Rice and put him outside the ring. And wait a minute, the fist may fly here. Well, Leilani says, come on, let's just take it easy for the moment, boys. Back to the wrestling, and let's see how long it'll last before something else happens between these two. Here's a body lock put on by Tom Rice. Bill Blanchard feels the pressure from that. Slips an arm in there. He's going to try to get the other one in, I do believe, to try to break that. No, he hip locks beautifully. Look at that as he snapped Tom Rice right over on his back. Rice tugging on hair, which just shouldn't be done, trying to spoil things. And the break in the meantime, Leilani orders that so they can get up and try a few more tactics. Uh oh, that hurt a little bit. That hip lock wasn't so good. Tom Rice has been landing on that canvas with some resounding thuds here. There, and the referees hold once again. Maneuvering for position, and there is Rice diving in with that leg scissors of his, which he does so well, and it continually seems to fool the other wrestlers. They just can't keep their legs out of that one. Rice takes a headlock on top of everything else and begins to put the pressure on all the way up and down here. So there's the break. Watch it. Let's see if they get away. They do. And every time Tom Rice breaks clean, he thinks it's a major accomplishment and wants all the fans to know about it. Side headlock put on now by Joe Blanchard. Tom Rice reaching for the hair, reaching for anything to try to get himself out of this hole. Comes up with a body lock, now goes out on the arm to try to break the pressure of that side headlock. And look how Joe Blanchard is rearing back with that. And then the hold is broken and he's taken down with Tom Rice going on top, taking a wrist lock. Blanchard comes out of it, he's topside. And we've seen some pretty fast maneuvering in here by a couple more of these wrestlers during our wrestling workouts. Blanchard just leans in there once again. We look out there, the boys can lose their tempers faster than I can tell you about it here, particularly when we have Tom Rice and Joe Blanchard against each other. Now here's a lecture from Tom Rice, and Blanchard indicates he just as soon go on with the wrestling no matter whether it's rough or tough or scientific or whatever it is. Here he goes for a cradle hold. Joe Blanchard has a cradle hold, but he hasn't actually taken Tom Rice down with it as yet. Rice is trying to maintain his balance. Blanchard can't quite figure how to get him off balance. And instead, look at Tom Rice with a nice maneuver there. Put some pressure on Blanchard's left leg, took him down. Blanchard's back again, though, where he still has a chance to come up with a cradle hold if he can make it work. He's got one leg grapevine, but he can't seem to hang on to it. And Leilani asks a question and says, I think you boys better quit and try another one. So Joe Blanchard, ready to move, comes in at Tom Rice into that referee's hold here once again. Top headlock now put on, and a takedown. Nice rolling takedown that time by Tom Rice. Caught a leg and the head at the same time, and he has them all locked up here. And they break on the command of the referee. Set to move. Into the referee's hold, and Tom Rice. Nice top wrist lock. He has not key locked it as yet, but he's got it up there pretty well. And he may be pulling hair, but Joe Blanchard spoils things for him and gets him off balance. And now has a chance for a possible reverse full Nelson. He's not going for that. He's keeping half Nelson, taking now a wrist lock into a hammer lock and then breaking the hole. Go back to the center of the ring. And Tom Rice has got shoelace trouble over here, so we hold up things for just a moment while he gets the shoelace tied once again. Now the action resumes. Tom Rice takes the top headlock, pulls down on it, and takes down Joe Blanchard. And now has a half Nelson here, then moves behind for a body lock. Lost it. Joe Blanchard a little too fast for him on that one. Got away and almost got his own body lock. He hasn't gotten it locked up tight here yet, but he's working toward that. But watch Tom Rice with his counter move now as he tries some maneuver. It's a wrist lock. Arm bar, the bell, has called for the end of the action. Nobody wants to quit. Then Rice finally decides he's had enough, I think, of a young fellow by the name of Joe Blanchard. So it's all over, at least for the moment. Here comes a handshake. A pretty friendly one, a uh, pat on the back. Oh, a little too hard. 